Good morning, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Let's see here. If you are there, let me know you are there. Good morning, Heartbeat Unguin. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, Heartbeat Andrea. Good morning, good morning, Heartbeats. When you get on, let me say something to me so that I know that you are there. Good morning, good morning, Heartbeat Alicia. Good morning, Heartbeat Pudding Pop. Good morning, good morning, Heartbeat Veronica. Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Merry Christmas and all that good stuff that goes with it. I am excited to share a word with you this morning. I am excited that we are all here in this year of 2020. Some people say that 2020 has not been good to them, but let's listen. 2020 has been great for me. We're all still here everybody's doing well. And so as believers, as people of God, I want you to think positive about this year. Good morning, Heartbeat Jocelyn. I want you to think positive about this year, that there are 17 more days left in this year, and that is more than enough time for God to do what he has to do. And so this morning, the weekly dosage is this. I've done my part. Now it's time for you to do yours. Again, the weekly dosage from God this week, I've done my part. Now it's time for you to do yours. And so I'm coming from Luke 1, and I'm going to be reading verses 11 through 20, and then verses 28 through 38. And so, you know, this is the good morning, good morning, heartbeat, Juanita, good morning, all love back to you. Um, And so, you know, this is the Advent season. This is when we celebrate the birth of Christ. And so this morning's scripture is coming from the announcement of John's birth and the announcement of uh, Christ. And so it goes like this, and I'm reading out of the um, New King James Version. It says this, it says, then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, him meaning Zacharias, standing on the right side of the altar of incest. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. And so, like I said, this is the story of when the angel came to announce the birth of John. It says this, but the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard. That's key. Remember that for your prayer is heard and your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son and you shall call his name John and you will have joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth for he will be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb and he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said to the angel, how shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife is well advanced in years. And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. But behold, You will be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their own time. Okay, so now let's jump over to verse 28. And here we have uh, Gabriel is now visiting Mary and it says this. And having come in, the angel said to her, rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his sayings and considered 
what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom. There will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now, indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived the son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. And so as I was reading this, because I like to read Matthew and Luke's version of, you know, the coming of Christ, the birth of Christ, especially around these times. And so as I was reading this, is anybody out there trying to wonder like I was, okay, why is it that the angel came to Zacharias and he also came to Mary and he told them both the, pretty much the same thing. He told them, you know, he told Zacharias, your prayers heard. He told Mary, you're going to be favored. But then he told both of them, you're going to bear a son. Um, he told them what to name them. And then he told them that they both would be great. However, Zacharias got punished because he didn't believe and Mary didn't. Has anyone else wondered, okay, like why did they both get the same things, but their Gabriel's response to both of them was different. So I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, okay, why is this? So I go back and I go over to read and I'm like, Lord, help me with this. And then it came to me, why did Gabriel treat them differently when they both asked the same question? Remember Zacharias response was this, I'm too old. Mary's response was being unto me. And so I'm sitting here thinking, could it be that the prayer has been answered, but when the prayer is answered, you doubt? And so remember, I said that the word, the weekly dosage was this. I've done my part. Now it's time to do yours. And so I'm sitting there thinking, you know, hey, Zacharias, he's, he admitted I'm old in age. Could it be that our prayers don't get answered because we're old in age? We know better. We've had experience with God. We know what he will do. But when he answers our prayer, we don't believe it. When we, he answers it because he does not answer our prayer the way that we think that he should answer it. We don't believe it. We start doubting him could it be that is why we're not getting the results that we want to get remember I always people didn't know me to hang out with me say my phone and my famous lines is this I'm too grown for that and so could it be that I'm too grown now I've got too many um receipts to show that God is who he said he is God will do what he said he was do and so when as I sat back and I thought about this I said this I said okay Mary is young Mary was like 18 19 somewhere in there she was young not a whole lot of experience you know probably never been sick you know haven't really experienced life so she she has childlike faith. Okay. Being unto me, but us being in our older age, we have experience with God. We've been sick. We've seen God heal us, but yet when we pray, we don't do what God says for us to do. So in this Zacharias had to do something. So the angel tells him, you're going to have a child. Now, Mary, the Holy ghost is going to fall upon her. She's going to become pregnant, but he tells Zacharias, man, you got to do something. Zacharias like I'm too old. And that woman of mine, she can't can't do nothing either. But see, Zacharias, he started using excuses. Isn't that what some of us do sometimes? We start making excuses as to why we can't do something. We pray and we ask God for something. We say we have expectation of manifestation. And then when manifestation comes, when God gives us the answer on what to do, we start giving him excuses. I'm too old for that. Oh, I can't do that. I'm not healthy enough for that. I don't have enough money 
for that. I don't have the right um, qualifications for that. Could it be that the answer has already come and God is saying, hey, I've done my part. Now it's time for you to do your part. You pray and tell me that you want to be healed from all sickness of disease. And I tell you, I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee, but you continue to stay in the Chick-fil-A line. You continue to not want to exercise. You continue to do things that aren't healthy, but the answer has already come. You tell me, God, I need a promotion. And God says, I am your promotion. Promotion comes from up above. It doesn't come from man, but you won't go to work on time. You won't do what they ask you to do. See, we've got a part to play. And in these last days, remember, if we go back over the weeks of the weekly dosages and what God was saying, you know, he says, wholeness is the plan for your life that I have for you. He tells us, you know, I'm doing something new. He says, you know, he gives us all of these instructions. He tells us to obey, but we don't want to do what God has told us to do. We've been praying for wholeness. We've been believing God for healing. We've been believing God for deliverance. But when God puts that person in your life and he tells you, oh, you need to go see such and such. Oh, no, I don't like her. Oh, she don't like me. Oh, no, I ain't feeling her. But God is giving you the answers, but you won't go and do what he needs you to do. Okay, Pastor G, you using all of these like natural examples. Okay, you want a biblical example? At the pool of Bethesda, what did he do? He asked the man, do you want to be made whole? And he said, pick up your bed and walk. See, the man had to do something in order for God to do his part. He told Moses and them, you want to get across the Red Sea? What did he tell him? Stretch out your hand. Moses had to to do something for God to do his part. Even look, Zacharias was looking for, uh, Zacchaeus, I'm sorry, was looking for salvation. What did he do? He didn't, you know, he knew he was short in stature, but he didn't use that as an excuse. What did he do? He climbed up in that tree. He did something. Even the, le the 10 lepers that we talked about a couple weeks ago, it says that God told them to go see the priest. And it says, as they went, they were healed. And so heartbeats, you've got to do something in these last days. Oh, your prayers have been answered. God heard your prayer. You notice when the angel came to Zacharias, he said this. He said, your prayer has been heard. Your prayer has been answered. It said this, but you got to do something. So that means we all have a part to play. God is sitting up on the throne. He said, I done sent Jesus. Jesus done died for you. Look, even this, let's, let's, let's rewind this thing. Let me give you another biblical perspective for this. Even when they call for Jesus to come, resurrect Lazarus, what did he say? He told Martha, go get married because she about to miss the blessing. What did he say? Show me where they where he's laid. Roll back the tomb. Do you see what I'm saying? Everybody had something to do. Everybody had a part to play. So you want to be healthy? You're praying to God? You're confession healing scriptures? Then you got to do your part. Get out of that Chick-fil-A line. Get out of five guys. Get out of all those places that you know you shouldn't be. Get out of Horse and Dickies getting that fried fish every Friday. Start eating like God would have you to eat. Start doing what God would have you to do. You say, I want to be more anointed. I want to have a better relationship with Christ, then you got to start getting up. You got to start staying in the word. You've got to start knowing the word for yourself. See, these accounts that I'm giving you, they should, you should already know them. Something should be happening with your spirit. Your spirit ought to be leaping saying, I knew God wanted to bless me. I knew I wasn't supposed to be in this situation. Why? Because of your faith, the word is being mixed with your faith and causing an action, causing something to happen on the inside side of you. And so heartbeats, the weekly dosage for this week is from God is saying this, I've done my part. Now it's time for you to do yours. Don't think that this year is over. He's already spoken saying that something new is about to happen in your life. He's already spoken saying that I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do. God is not limited to time. He's still, there's still enough time in this year for this year to be the best year of your life. Think about this. 
You've been saying you wanted to do this and you wanted to do that. God didn't cause what's happening, but he is using this quarantine for his glory. So you, you've got plenty of time to get closer to him. You've got plenty of time to restore relationships with your family. You all in the same house at the same time. And so don't take what is happening for granted. Know that God is using everything that is taking place for his glory. And so I'm going to need you to reevaluate your life today. See what it is that God has told you to do recognize that he's already answered the majority of your prayers but you have got to do your part heartbeats i know you can do it god knows you can do it you have everything on the inside of you to succeed god lives within you his power is within you you are anointed enough you are blessed enough you are good enough you have everything on the inside of you to succeed so i'm telling you to kick satan out your ears kick him out of your your mind, kick him out of your heart, kick him out of your house, kick him out of your finances, kick him out of your health. Do your part so that you can see the glory of God in your life. I love you a bunch. You know how I'm going to end this. Come on and repeat after me. God wants me whole and I am getting whole by the minute. I love you a bunch. I see you heartbeat dawn. I'm glad you're healed now and that you're walking in your wholeness. So everybody, it's time to make a move. Get started. Make your moves. Do what God has called you to do. Show this earth why you are really here. Amen. I love you guys so much. Don't forget to share this. And also, if you have not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so. Some great things are on there. There are also all of the old dosages where you can go back and, you know, get re-energized, get rejuvenated. Don't let these last days, because of what they look like, deter you from what God has already said. I love you a bunch. What's up, Heartbeat Robin? I see ya. That's right. God wants you whole. I love you guys a bunch, and I will see you next week at the same time. Have a great week and do your part.